This is taken from the New King James Version of our Bible. And it reads thusly, And I will put empathy between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. We want to share with you for a few moments words around this thought, the first no way, the first no way. There's a song, a Christmas song, called The First Noel. It goes something like the first Noel that the angels did say was to certain poor shepherds and fields as they lay. And certainly that is good news, Noel, Christmas time. But this verse here in Genesis, is the gospel, the first gospel, in that God himself is speaking. This promise of what we now celebrate as Christmas, his coming into the world as incarnate, as baby Jesus, for the sins of the whole world. Should you have attended uh, seminary, study as a big word for this particular verse in scripture, evangelism or proto-evangelism, the first gospel, God spoke, God spoke the first gospel. And we will examine this verse, for within it uh, we get the promises that God is sure and has shown to be sure of his word. It is something that will give us help in this season. A season where many of us, in fact most of us, are going through some difficult times because of loved ones passing, of difficulty at home, of <coughs> It is a verse that we, after examining, examining it, will find some help. God's word always helps us. But if we have a firm understanding of what this season is about, no matter whether it's of good cheer or not, I believe it will draw us closer to God. And if we draw closer to God, God's word is sure. He will draw closer to us. And when we are close to God, no matter what we are going through, we have joy, we have peace, a peace that would pass all understanding. Let us take a look at this verse. And in the context where Adam and Eve have disobeyed God, they have, of their own free will, as coerced by Satan <coughs> through the serpent, disobeyed God, and now God himself is giving out both blessings and curses all at the same time. God himself turned to the serpent who had deceived Eve, who had then ate of the forbidden fruit 
and then gave it to her husband, Adam. Adam, for knowing, ate of the forbidden fruit. Mm. And their eyes were opened, and sin was introduced into the world. And God knew this in his all-knowing ability and attribute that he has, knew that this would happen. And he made preparation for our salvation. During this discourse, he turned to Satan and said this words to him, and I will put enmity between you and the woman. There will always be conflict between God's children, God's plans, God's way, and that which opposes God's plan. There will always be, because God said so, opposition to his word, to his children. Those who are of Satan will always be against those who are of God. Why? Because God said so. Mm. There will always be people, either Satan himself or victims of Satan, being used to tell lies, to murder, to steal, and to do all sorts of evil. The Bible tells us that when Adam and Eve did sin, hmm, sin brought about death. Sin and the consequences of sin is our enemies. The Bible tells us in Ephesians that we war not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against spiritual wickedness in high places. It is the forces of evil that are against God's children. Why? Because God said so. There is something about Satan and the people who follow Satan will always have animosity towards God's children. The reason why we have devastation in this world, pain in this world, sorrow in this world, anything that is not God is because Satan and his followers, his seed, is in direct opposition to me our joy, to our peace, to our right relationship with God. Why? Because God said so. In the book of Genesis, we find that God is speaking, let there be light, and it was so, let there be animals, and it was so. God said so, that he would put conflict between Satan and mankind. If you're not in conflict with Satan, mm, <laughs> you might consider changing sides. <laughs> then he says, and between your seed and her seed, and I want you to underline in your minds as of those who have your Bibles and your Bibles, her seed. For within this statement, we find that God is saying that this virgin birth will take place as a sign. Her seed, not Adam's seed, not man's seed, but her seed. Her seed, Mary. The Virgin Mary brought forth a son just as God said she would. Isaiah 7 and 14 verifies that, that he will give us a sign, and the sign will be a virgin delivering a son, and will call his name in 
Emmanuel. And Matthew repeats that in the first chapter, the 23rd verse. And they call him Emmanuel. Which means God is with us. Hallelujah. Because God said so. Because God said in the first Noel that he had his plans even before the foundations of the world to bring forth himself as incarnate baby Jesus. Seed of a woman, not of a man. And they called his name Jesus. Because God said so. Because God is singing the first Noel here that the world and the consequences of sin being battered by sin and the consequences of sin, the world turned upside down because Satan and his seed is running rampant. We need a Savior. And this Savior, God says, will come about by the woman's seed. God overshadowed, the Holy Spirit overshadowed Virgin Mary. And thus, he was nurtured in a womb. God humbled himself to come as humankind to be birthed by a virgin. Isn't that good news? Isn't that good news when you think that God had us in mind hmm, when Adam and Eve was sinning, when sin was brought forth into this earth, God had us in mind that yes, I will come as baby Jesus. I will come. The Savior of the world will come. And the signs of virgin, not touched by man, but touched by God to deliver him for the salvation of mankind. The woman's seed. That's good news. That's the first Noel. That's the gospel that God coming into the world as Savior. Mm. Mm. And I'm going to focus upon uh, the last section of this verse, whereas God saying this, he shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. The last section of that sentence, you shall bruise his heel. Jesus came. In 1 John 3 and 8 tells us that he came and he was manifested to destroy the works of the devil. The devil has always worked and will always work against God's people. And the devil makes headway in this conflict by striking at the body of Christ. Christ has said that the church is his body. Christ has said that on the rock, the rock of revealed revelation of God himself, he would build his church and the very gates of hell should not prevail against it. Christ has promised that, that we have victory. But God said in this verse that Satan would bruise the body of Christ. Satan would bruise his heel, a part of the body that is low to the ground. Part of the body that is still a part of Christ. We, the church, is the body of Christ and we are subject to pain, suffering, or bruising that we all will incur. Why? Because God said so. That Satan and the powers of sin and the consequences of sin will bruise his church. That's good news. Because God said so. Mm, that, that, that's kind of mm -hmm. uh, hard. God said so. This is why we are bruised. 
He said so that Satan will have or be allowed to bruise his church. Satan and the consequences of sin will bruise us as a people. As his children, we are being bruised every day. Because God said we would be bruised by Satan himself, by his seed, for those who are in the church, those who are out the ch outside of the church, we will be bruised. Look at it. Pick up the newspaper, read the media, and all of the tragedy that's going on in the world. We're not safe to even go to the mall for fear of someone who, being used by Satan, decides to shoot. Look at us. We're being bruised by the consequences of sin where we are suffering from cancer. Suffering from split relationships, broken homes, suffering from death even. Suffering from being lonely, that's bruising. Suffering from crying night after night until you can't cry anymore, that's bruising. Being lonely, so lonely, and not wanting to be with anybody, but still lonely, that's bruising. Crying out and seeming like no one hears you, even God himself, it seems like he's not listening to us. It's bruising. Trying the best you can to do all you can and yet falling short. That's bruising. Sinning. Falling victim to sin. Being caught in sin. That's bruising. The vision, even within the church. That's bruising. When we are double-minded, even with ourselves, sometimes I have a hard time even getting along with myself. Right. That's losing. Sometimes I can't find my way. Sometimes I don't even feel like coming to church. Sometimes I don't feel like getting out of bed. That's losing. Sin, the consequences of sin, has us so much in conflict with ourselves, with others, and even with God. That's the bruising of God's body. We suffer. Some of us came here with a heavy heart because we've been bruised all day this past week. Hmm? Some of us are praying for our loved ones who are in prison, those who are estranged from us. That's bruising. We go through all of this stuff in life. Why? Because God said so. Ecclesiastes confirms this, that there is a time and place that everything will come about. Huh? There is a season for everything. It is not a matter of if this bruising will come to us. It's a matter of when this bruising will come to us. It's never a good time, hmm, you may think, for losing a loved one. Hmm? But God said so. It's never a good time in our lives to meet with misfortune, but God said we will. And that's part of the good news. Because if I said times will get hard, hmm, if I said Difficult times are ahead. If I said someone will pass on and you will go into depression, some of it may be true. But if God said it will come true, but the same God that said that the bruising of his body's heel is the same God that said the head of the serpent. All right. <laughs> the same God that declares that Jesus and his seed would be a part of the crushing of the head of Satan. Mm. Mm. It's the good news that
that says the trouble won't last always. Right. <laughs> it's the good news that say, though he slay me, yet will I trust him, and he will deliver him. Me, praise be his name. Right. It is the good news that says that, yeah, we suffer, but we're not suffering for nothing. Right. Hmm? It is the same God that said that I will never leave you or forsake you. All right. All right. Hmm? Yes, life is hard. Yes, we get tough. Yes, we are disappointed. Yes, we mourn. Yes, we cry. Yes, we fall down. But God has said, I am there to pick you up. All right. I'm there to give you All victory. Right. I'm there yeah. to heal your wounded Broken spirit. Mm -hmm. It's the same God that said, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're going to have some tough days. Mm -hmm. But then I'm going to be with you through those tough days. Right. Yeah. It's the same God that says, Yes, there will be some high waters in your life. <laughs> but I will be with you. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's the same God that there will be fires. In your life. Mm -hmm. But don't dismay, I'm in the fire with you. All right. <laughs> it's the same God that says, Yes, you will doubt me sometimes, mm -hmm. like Thomas did. But there will come an instant in your life that you will fall down on your knees and say, Yes, you are my Lord and my God. All right. Because I'm with you through thick and thin, I'm with you through health. And when you're not so healthy, I'm with you when you have a drink of water or when you're thirsty. I'm with you when everybody is calling you, hey, hey, my friend. And I'm with you when nobody wants to be bothered with you. I'm with you. I'm with you. Just test me. I'm there. God is saying, yes, like the psalmist would say, if I ascend to heaven, you are there. Yes, God is there. If I take the wings of the morning and fly to the uttermost parts of the sea. God is there. And even if I make my bed in hell, right. God is there. I can right. suffer through the yeah. pains of hell, but yeah. God is there. God is there for us. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. I can make it. I don't seem like I can make it. Mm -hmm. I know your heart is breaking. I know you're going through depression. I know. So I'm going through the same. Thing. But we can go together because we're going in Jesus' name. All right. Because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. All right. hmm? Because God says so. Right. God said there will be casualties. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There will be death. Mm -hmm. huh? We've come into a battle here and there will be loss of life. But just beyond that battle, Huh? It's victory. All right. Victory in him. Victory that he's assured of us. Yes. That no matter how tough it is, on the other side mm, is victory. Yes. On the other side is being with him. On the other side, we can shout glory. Hallelujah. On the other side, he has set me free. On the other side, he said hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hmm. Hmm. God said so that we, as part of the body of Christ, though we be bruised, will crush Satan's head. Hmm. When Jesus came into this world as incarnate God, his express purpose was to go to yonder's Calvary's cross. And there on Calvary's cross, he delivered that final blow mm, to Satan himself. That yes, you've been messing with my people. Yes, you've been tormenting my people. Yes, you have been bruising my people. Huh? But I'm here to say that they are forgiven. I'm here to say that you are forgiven. You are forgiven. And I am forgiven. I'm here. And I accept the cloak of his righteousness being put on me, Jehovah Shishkulu. That when we do so, we become victors. Mm -hmm. That we are God's children, his seed. And we 
a part of that great cloud of witnesses. Mm -hmm. And we will be a part of that great cloud of witnesses as a witness. Just as God says, it is done. Hmm? Who, Paul says, if God be for us, who can be against us? Hmm? Who, tell me who, hmm. Satan himself? <laughs> Persecutions? Hmm? No? Will, 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 will anything like death overcome us? No? Hmm. We are like sheep before the slaughter. But there is good news on what God says. We are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus our Lord. Convinced, like Paul is convinced. We should all be convinced that nothing will separate us from the love of Christ. Amen. Mm -hmm. Will life separate us? No, we can't fall in love with this life. <laughs> will death separate us? No, 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 no. Will angels separate us? No, no, angels won't separate us. Will powers separate us? No powers will not separate us. Will things present hmm, separate us? No things present will not separate us. Will things to come separate us? No things will not come that will separate us. Not height, not tell. Hmm, not any other created thing will be able to separate us from the love of God that's in Christ Jesus. We are victors. We are victors. We have the in Christ because he will never ever let us go and we will never ever let him go and we will overcome and he will grant us a peace he will grant us a joy he will grant us something that we cannot understand in our minds that will come over us that we will stand on the word of God because God says so I'm standing Yes, I'm sad in my heart because my loved one is gone. I'm sad in my heart because I have failed. I'm sad in my heart because I am lonely. I'm sad in my heart. But I'm standing on what God said. That he is mine and I am his. And if I be in Christ, I am more than healed. I am more than delivered. I am with God. Huh? Come what may from day to day, mm, my heavenly Father watches over me. Mm, God will take us, take care of us. Won't he take care of us? He will take care of us. Be not dismayed. Whatever be tied, God will take care of us. Mm, beneath his wings where love abide, God will take care of us. Yes, it is hard. Yes, this time of year brings about many of emotions. But remember, God will take care of us. We have victory just beyond the tears, just beyond the dark midnight. We have victory. Yes, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes at daybreak. At daybreak, Jesus is there for us saying, come on, come on. Make another step. Mm. Come on. Come on. Make another step. Little by little. Inch by inch. Make another step towards victory. Hmm? God knows exactly what we're going through. Why? Because he said so. Mm. The first Noel. Yes, the angels did sing for the modern day psalmist would say. But the first Noel is found within the 15th verse of the third chapter of Genesis where God said, Mm. We will bruise the head of the serpent. Mm. Why? Because he came. The virgin birth birthed him. Why? Because he said so. He will bruise us. Why? Because God said so. Mm. We will have victory because God said so. You may not feel it. 
Mm, some days you, it's going to kind of be tough to, be, to believe that. But if God said so, mm, we can bang it. That's 100% go. Mm. Let me make it seem a little bit better this year. So that we can go through with whatever and all the stuff that we have gone through this year. Mm. You think back over your life and how it was this time last year and how it has changed this year. But God is still God. All right. <laughs> God said that we would do it. God said that we would be bruised. And if God said so, let's believe him and thank him for it. But God also said that we will overcome. Thus he says, he gives us a commandment. Rejoice. Rejoice. Again I say rejoice in the Lord. Thus he gives us a commandment. Hmm. In all things, in all circumstances, give God hmm, thanks. For it is the will of Christ Jesus. And Jesus himself says, and I tell you these things, hmm, that you may have peace. In this world, you will have trials and tribulations, but be of good cheer. All right. I have overcome the world. We are more than conquerors who are in Christ Jesus. Amen, amen. and amen. amen.